<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Manchester United vs Chelsea blockbuster matchup, battle of two European super heavyweights. Both teams so sorted on and off the field. Oh wow, I cannot wait for this particular clash. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. We're here yet again for another match preview. I have to be honest. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this because, you know, people talk about the bounce back. We've had our bounce back, if you can call it a bounce back against West Ham. And now I'm worried. I'm worried. Is Charity FC going to be back again? We've seen this. We've been in this place before. Can our team somewhat find the mentality to, to, to be up for this particular matchup against Man United, against a team that probably doesn't care either? Man United, they've clocked out. Their players have clocked out. We'll have a look at some of the news. A lot of their players are not available for this match. Very much a weekend Man United side. But what about our mental state at the moment in the Premier League? Are we all there? Do you know what I mean? Like, or, uh, or our players sort of thinking, well... You know what's really going to happen in this in this uh, Premier League table? We're probably going to be third. I mean, who cares if we're fourth? Yes, I'm going to be embarrassed if we're fourth and Arsenal leap us. But the players probably thinking third, fourth, second. What does it even matter? It's not a trophy, but it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do the um, we're going to do uh, the lineup soon. But before we do that, let's have a look at some of the news that's been floating around. It'll be interesting to have a look at that. First up, ladies and gentlemen, some news that's floating around. Chelsea player, players' feet. The problems around the club could force Tuchel towards the exit door. Um, final clarification around the funding. Uh, Stanford Bridge, a willingness to commit to 10 years ownership uh, being held in London for all three bidders. Look, I might do a separate video on this. There is some legitimacy around this, and there's some talks, rumours for people that are in the know, they're saying that this could happen. Like if there's not heavy investment, if the new owners don't show enough ambition, you could possibly see Thomas Tuchel walk. But I guess a good question is where could he go? Where could he go? And we did a show earlier today on Matisse's channel, or you can eat Chelsea, as you guys know, a weekly show. And Matisse put up a really good um, answer. And that answer is Real Madrid. Real Madrid is probably the only other destination that Thomas Tuchel could think about going. So we have to be weary about that. We really do. And I hope that the new owners, whoever it is, whenever it is announced, that we hurry the F up in the in the transfer window and um, really back this manager to, to do well next season. This is from Nathan G. Singh. Chelsea's current centre-back targets as things stands. As you can see, Wesley Fana, Maximilian Kilman, Jules Kunde, Pau Torres, and Vardio, uh, the new one that's been added uh, with... Uh, you know, he's, he plays for Leipzig. I mean, some really top talents. I would take Wesley Fofana. I think Wesley Fofana is going to be someone who's who's going to be incredible in the Premier League. He's, you know, for someone who's not extremely tall or anything like that for a centre back, but he is so mobile. His awareness is good, physicality, um, attitude is good. Obviously, he's endured that heavy injury, um, and then you know, it'll be it'll be I'll be keen to see how he. Yeah, well, he's already recovered his back. I'm pretty sure he's back now. Um, it'll be, I'll be keen to see how he you know, performs. Uh, but this is one player that I wouldn't mind getting. Pat Torres is, is right now playing for Liverpool and he's doing well at the moment. It's still nil-nil. I've got that match going on. Uh, and I'm probably going to do a video on Pat Torres off the back of this particular match sometime tomorrow. Jules Kunde, obviously, a very, very good selection as well. And so is Maximilian Kilman. Oh, I like all of those options. Are we going to be able to get to them by the time... The ownership situation is sorted. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see because we don't want to get into a situation where we're in June and the ownership situation is finally done and dusted. But every every top player has already started talks. The agents have started talks with other clubs. Breaking. Jaden Sancho, Harry Maguire, Paul Pogba, Luke Shaw, Edison Cavani, Fred are all out for tomorrow's match versus Chelsea. Some people are saying that's advantage Man United. But look. None of those players have really been on form, so it's not like it's a huge miss for Man United. But nonetheless, it's still Jaden Sancho. He's the one who scored against us last time, so um, it, it's still a big factor. Uh, if, if I'm if I'm being honest, uh, Liverpool just scored 
Oh, I'm so upset. Oh, Villarreal were doing all right as well. Um, it is what it is. And then the tweet goes on to say, Antonio Rudiger and Reese James will hopefully give Tuchel the green light after another session today. Um, I would like to see them back. I would really like to see them back. Apparently there was a training session today and then we'll see what happens tomorrow, um, whether they play or not. I, I, I would love to see them play, to be honest. Uh, there's only a handful of games left and we need to do well. Ben Chilwell is training with the under-23s next week and he's already doing ball work. The hope is that Chilwell will join Chelsea's preseason in America. This is good news, ladies and gentlemen. I hope he comes back to how things were. There's always going to be a bit of clad when you have a heavy injury, a serious injury like that, ACL injury, um, how you're going to you know, recover from that. So very keen to see how Chilwell um, starts the road uh, to, to coming back. So very excited that he's going to start training with under-23s next week and he will be part of the uh, preseason. This is the big news that's going around, ladies and gentlemen. Jorginho and his entourage want to return to Italy. This is from Nathan GC. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I'm in a situation where... And I've said this many times. I think we're in we're, we're in the perfect place right now to see Jorginho leave. I mean, he's got one more year left. We don't want to get into a situation where this guy goes out on a free as well. Juventus is interested. We can cash in on him. He is 30 and Chelsea Football Club, let's be honest. We don't do long-term <clears throat> long contracts for, for 30 year olds. So if he's looking for more security in life for, for his family as well, that's not what he's going to get as a 30-year-old. A lot of the fan base is like a bit worried, a bit concerned. Oh, what are we going to do? Look, he's not irre irreplaceable. I absolutely respect everything Jorginho has done for our football club, but not for one second do I think he's irreplaceable. I've mentioned it many a times in this particular channel. Yeah, Bubaka Kamara, who can do that job, deepest midfielder, can even fill in as a, as a defender. Uh, Liverpool's just scored another one. My God, that, that game's over. So upset. I thought Villarreal would do something. But... Yeah, um, yeah, Bubaka Kamara, Basuma is another very good job. Julian Weigl does exactly what Jorginho does, but a lot more mobility and physicality. Um, Shuameni, the number one standout, who does everything what Jorginho does, but a lot more uh, physicality, a lot more mobility, and his passing range is a lot more progressive, I'd say. So, look, it's the best time to let him go before he goes out on a free. That's how I look at it. Okay. This is what our situation is, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of um, injuries. Ben Chilwell, obviously, out. Reese James, Andres Christensen, Antonio Rüdiger, still to be found out tomorrow. I'm hoping they're all back, and I'm hoping Rüdiger and Reese James are going to be back into the um, into the conversation. Matt Kovacic is still out. Ross Barkley's uh, gone. I mean, Ross Barkley barely even features for us. Callum Antonadoy is all barely even features. Matteo Kovacic is a loss. I hope he comes back for the FA Cup final. I really need this guy to come back uh, for the FA Cup final. Thomas Tuchel and Ruben loftus cheek He's influential, involved in goals uh, lately, which is very good. He uh, very good. He needs to push himself to the limit. That's the challenge. Um, he had a shy game like everybody else against Arsenal. A calm first half as Crystal Palace. Shy game. How about how about saying he had a rubbish game? Just everybody <laughs> love the way how Thomas Tuchel um, downplays that shot game. Yeah, um, I mean I understand. It. <laughs> it's another way of saying you did not have a very good game, my man. Um, a calm first half versus Crystal Palace. Then in the second half he stepped up. Suddenly the momentum was there. This is what we demand. Yeah, that second half against Crystal Palace was absolutely buzzing, honestly, and that's the Ruben off the cheek that I want to see. Feather goes on to say, in general, he is a shy and calm person, but he needs to discover the monster in him and unleash it on the regular basis. It's absolutely necessary. We've heard Thomas Tuchel say this a few times about Ruben of the Sheik now. He needs to find that monster in him, that beast in him. He needs to be a lot more aggressive. He needs to be a lot more robust, uh, Ruben of the Sheik. He needs to be a lot more up and down. If you're going to play that, whether it be wing back, whether it be in the, the three-man midfield, you've got to be able to show that that eagerness to be robust um and this is what i want to see from ruben loft chick we try every day we are quite successful he needs to understand how much potential he has he needs to let loose i think look thomas Tuchel truly believes in this guy and i hope uh, this is getting in in him at the moment to understand that you know thomas Tuchel is if we take if we tout him as one of the you know one of the better managers out there for me after after pep and and Klopp, it's Thomas Tuchel. So 
Ruben lost the sheik. It's got to take a lot of heart um, on, on this uh, backing from Thomas Tuchel. Thomas Tuchel and Antonio Rudiger, no matter how the situation will be and when it will be solved and how things will be settled and how active we can be in the transfer market, at the end, we will dig in and squeeze our, uh, squeeze off everything we have with the squad. I will try to push the squad to the limit. He's a still big part of this club. We demand 100% of him from preseason. Life will go on whether we like it or not. We will give our very best. I will be fully involved with all my heart and knowledge. I love to hear that from Thomas Tuchel, that he will be fully involved. Start from next season, making sure we we mount a proper challenge uh, for the title. I don't expect us to win the title, no way, but bridge the gap. Let's make it interesting. Let's make it a three-way horse uh, race, uh, to be honest, and um, yeah, not, not let, allow uh, you know, Liverpool and City to run away. But yeah. Let's get the most out of Rudiger while he's still around. We need it. We need it. And I'm pretty sure he will want to give that as well, um, if I'm being absolutely honest. Thomas Tuchel on Reese James' position. I'm a bit more in that in, in, in that this his very position is in the wing back position. More decisive, but it's more demanding. Both positions are filled with top quality. Look, I pictured Reese James start of this season as an RCB. I, th I didn't think. He showed me enough last season that he was cut out to be a out and out wing back, but he really developed himself as a very good wing back this season. Goals, assist, was getting into some really good positions, and I thought, okay, maybe maybe there is something to be looked at over here. But Thomas Tuchel seems like every now and then putting him in as an RCB, probably because his physicality, his robust nature, pace um, is is needed in the RCB, and it's probably to do with. Aspilicueta not being well equipped anymore. So if we get ourselves a defender that is well equipped, like for example, if, if you know Jules Kunde or even Chalabab starts playing on that side, we're probably going to see them play and then you know Reese James being a wing back. So um the good news is he can play both position. Thomas Tugo on Reese James position. I would love to have two Reese James. It's 55% towards wing back, 45% towards the back three. It depends how the opponent plays against us. Look, at the end of the day, I think, as, as Thomas Tuchel said, he's looking for attributes of Rhys James in the RCB position. So it's a message to 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 our current um, centre backs that we have, mostly talking about Chalaba, who's going to stick around, and obviously looking at um, you know Jules Kunde next season. That you've got to have similar attributes as as Tom, um, as uh, Rhys James. Thomas Tuchel on the last win at Old Trafford coming in 2013. Can you believe it, ladies and gentlemen? 2013 was the last time we won at Man United. Wow. So it's time. <laughs> Always a good time to win. No matter if you won the last or two match, uh, or two or last or two match, it just shows it's not easy. These streaks exist against some opponents. Harder to get victories. Man United's the opponent for us. Further goes on to say, with all the respect we have for the history, occasion, and quality, we try and will arrive to win this match. I hope so, man. I hope so. Thomas Tuchel and Ralph Ragnick, he had his fantastic record in Germany to bring clubs to the very highest level, build clubs from scratch. It's nice to see him always, always tough to play against his teams. He's got a lot of respect for Ralph Ragnick, of course. Ralph Ragnick, uh, I don't think the current crop of players in Man United are really listening to him. A majority of them are not. There are some, obviously, there are, but, um, you know, uh, well, it'll be interesting to see what they do next season with Ten Hag and Ralph Ragnick going further, uh, you know, further up the up the channel. Um, Thomas Tuchel on return to Rudiger leaving. I don't think anybody likes it. He's a huge factor in our 1.5 season together. He gives everybody confidence. We have to accept it. We will accept it if he, that he leaves. There will be life. At Chelsea without Tony, 100% there will be life without uh, Antonio Rudiger. As I said, always, it hurt me a lot, this particular departure, even though, yeah, it was expected. But I thought somewhere deep inside me, I just thought maybe we can get this done. I even heard, you know, as I said, some in the nose have reached out and said, you know, some of the players are, are hurting as well, that that he's leaving. Um, they wanted the impression that he was going to stick around. So, look, it's not just us fans it's the players as well okay let's get on with this ladies and gentlemen this is the lineup that i would go with um for um for this particular match let me just bring that down yeah okay so let's just sort this out a little bit um 
In goalkeeping position, Mendy. I, I don't see any reason to play Kepa at the moment, to be honest. I mean, there's no disrespect to Kepa. It's just um, there's only a handful of games left, and I'd rather play uh, Mendy. Rudy, hopefully he's trained well and he can come back. Um, he's only missed a couple of games, so it's not like he's missed a ton of games. So I would like to see him back if he's fit. Silva. And I want to continue with Chalaba. To be honest, I want to continue with Chalaba. Um, yeah, yeah. Rich James has muscle injury, so I don't want to risk him as opposed to Rudy. I get that. Like with Rudy, you might ask the question, why are you risking Rudy? But um, I think in Rudy's case, it's it's, uh, it's probably not as serious as Reese. Reese has been picking up some injuries. Uh, Rudy has been fine up until now. With Reese, I'll probably be a bit more cautious. I don't know if I should exert all that energy to have him on, on the right wing back position. Um, so for me, yeah, Chalaba as, as RCB and probably Ruben Loftus Cheek again over here as he's been playing um, in recent times. Alonso on the left side. Um, yeah. yeah, hopefully, hopefully he has a decent game, Alonso. In the middle, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go with Jorginho as the deepest midfielder. Angela Kante to help out in the pivot. Obviously, you got Ruben Lofts to Sheik Alonso to help out as well. Probably slide in mount um, just over here as well. And then uh, I'm going to go with two up top. Um, so I'll go with Mason Mount. Berna. Okay. Uh, let me just change that. Now, some of you guys might be saying, well, Miz, what, what happened to Lukaku? What happened to Pulisic? What happened to Ziyech? Look, I want all of those players to come off the bench. I want them to come off the bench, and I want them to do their best like they did against West Ham. Have an impact again. Pulisic, thank you so much for that goal against West Ham, but I want him to be off the bench again and produce that same impact. If you do well again off the bench, we can come into the conversation against, I think, I believe we're playing Everton up, up next. I want to continue on with him. I want to see where it goes. I don't want to now all of a sudden drop him. Similarly with Habits as well, I want him to continue along with Mount. Uh, and Lukaku, once again, he was looking sharp against West Ham off the bench. So I want to see that attribute off the bench and see that attitude, see that hunger. Um, similarly with Hakim Ziyech. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my team against Man United, a week in Man United, if you want to call it a week in Man United. And I hope, I truly hope we don't turn into Charity, Charity FC. Everyone's been slapping Man United. We deserve to go out there and slap them as well. Um, I'm hoping a jammy 1-0, maybe a 2-0. I've predicted in all you can eat Chelsea a 1-1 because I feel our team really, whenever these sort of situations have arrived, we're not really shown up. So, um, yeah, look. 1-1, one, one, I wouldn't be surprised. I really wouldn't be surprised because Man United, let's be honest, uh -huh. what, the four losses in the last five, like how many times are they going to keep losing like that? And at home as well. So if they have some sort of shame, they probably would want to turn turn things around. And if we want to make sure that we take advantage of this Man United team that's in the mud, this is the best opportunity. So look, 1-0, 2-0, 1-1. your particular choice, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know your prediction. Let me know your team. How are you feeling moving into this particular match? I would love to hear it, ladies and gentlemen. Smash the like button if you're here for the first time. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Make sure you subscribe as well if you're um, if you're new. And uh, we shall see you guys for the watch along. I probably might drop another video before that, but let's see what happens. Until next time, see you.